everybody welcome back with the plapper platypus is the name and today we are talking engravings the system that just came out into global and i just unlocked it myself and i've been playing with it and uh yeah i'm gonna kind of go over what is good what is bad how it works how you get the resources and, and that whole deal now what i'm actually gonna we're actually gonna do some live engravings here um however i am gonna keep it <laughs> uh weak basically i'm gonna use really cheap stuff because very first note all right very first thing before we get into the video this shit will eat up your money like no other this is the most expensive system in the game and i've ran out of currency for the first time since starting the game and i ran out over the course of a day by trying to do these these are thirty thousand a piece and you might want to roll these 31 times because you got a bunch of them because the rolls aren't always good so keep in mind that this will eat money so i wouldn't recommend going straight for the legendaries necessarily because, like, look at the cost difference, right? 30,000, 5,000, 1,500. So I think gold is the sweet spot for most players. Um, and if you just want to get something on, like, you could easily just throw uh, the cheap stuff on and get some benefit um, to get, you know, a, still a good power spike, but without draining all your money. And then stick the legendaries for a couple, one or two of your best weapons, probably. But what is resonance? So basically, you have two pieces of gear. Each of them can be, you can engrave, what is in resonance? What is engraving? You can engrave them with basically, I think it's like a rune. And those runes will have one to three random stats. Let's go ahead and show you an example, right? One, you're going to go down to gear engraving. You're going to pick the plus and you're going to choose what you want. Now, these, the pentacle sword, staff, and cup, these do not seem to affect the attributes that go on to these. They, they seem to be completely separate of that. They all seem to just do three random attributes. I have not noticed any difference in the rolls based on that. It's not like the sword gives you attack damage. This doesn't give you magic damage. This doesn't give you HP and, you know, yada, yada. You can get anything from anything, right? So why are there different ones? So that is going to be the resonance. We're going to talk about that in a second. But first, let's just take a look at what happens when you engrave. I decide that I want to use the sword. I am going to engrave this with a sword. And boom, this weapon now gives me... I'm going to click use it. Don't remind me. Yeah, don't remind me again. Now, this sword gives me 106 HP. So when I come back here, I could take a look and I could see this sword has 106 max HP on it, which is a decent amount, but that would not be a good roll that I normally want. But let's say I'm just trying to get some effect. That's all I want. Now, you come to your second piece of gear on your character and you want to engrave it. So you're going to come down to engraving. Now, before you select this, let's actually now let's talk about resonance resonance is basically going to be the combination of these you have every combination of these two will get you something so you have one resonance on your weapon one resonance on your armor slash trinket two swords two greens what, two pentacles two staves two cups uh cup staff cup sword you know cup pentacle sword pentacle sword staff staff pentacle they all have a combo so if you come and click on this button right here it'll show you exactly what all they do now, there's going to be a few standout ones that are good, but it's going to be it's going to be kind of uh, de character dependent. But here's a piece of advice I want to give you first. If you have a piece of gear that you want to use on a lot of characters, let's say I want to use the uh, no healing received on a bunch of characters, right? And I'm planning on engraving it with something legendary because it's one of my best pieces of gear. I want to look at things that I might be able to get like let's say i decide for this character um it's a damage dealer and i want sword one because before actively attacking you get extra def attack and defense for each tile moved up to three you know up to three tiles 12 percent. and i'm like i want sword wand but i want another character and i actually just want them just to have increased crit i just want them to have sword sword so what's important is like look for things you you might want on other characters and if they share something like a sword you want to put the sword on this because then on the weapon you could put the other one right like there's a perfect example basically i had i think this exact situation i wanted um i think i wanted exactly this i think i wanted sword wand but i put wand i put wand on the staff instead of it instead of sword so the trinket i had to have the other one but what i could have just had like sword on this and that way i would have worked for both of the characters instead of only one of the characters and it kind of made it a, a big mess so make sure you're trying to think ahead if you're going to use multiple of these that you try to overlap this on one piece of gear like uh if the, you're going to try to use both of these then this one could just be sword and then the weapons for the characters could be the other one or vice versa you know 
Um, and so you're basically going to pick which one of these you want. The standout ones for me, we can go over them each one at a time. I don't think Sword Sword's very good. I think Wand Wand is average. I think it's good if you're not using uh, Angel, but I don't love it. I will say Wand Wand is pretty good if you have a character that's doing assisting attacks. Like on Etta, this could be really good because you attack, you use a skill, you use a skill, then you attack, and then on your turn, you get two more attacks. So you can get two level two attribute buffs, right? A turn, basically. Um, Guzman is the pinnacle pinnacle. Um, but the other ones that are good, Cup Cup for healer. Uh, Sword Wand for most characters because it's 4% attack and defense. Uh, is Sorry, 12% attack and defense is really good because it lasts to your next turn. You just have to move every turn. Um, and then Wand Cup is the most broken one, but it doesn't work in PvP. But for PvE, it doesn't matter. At the end of your turn, there's a 50% chance to gain Engraving Resonance, which... That means the next time your turn comes up, you get to use a skill, you get 100% of your energy back, and you reset the cooldown. This is going to be really good on super high cooldown abilities that cost like four, right? This means you could use it two turns in a row. Um, certain things that could come to mind maybe are maybe like barrels, giant explosion attacks or something like that, right? There's lots of attacks with long cooldowns, and they have a 50% chance to reset it. It has a cooldown of four turns, but still, if you could use the, one of the most powerful abilities in the game twice in a row... Um, you know, two turns in a row. Even if it takes like three or four turns to actually get this to proc, I still think that's going to be pretty valuable. Um, and then you've got a specific, some tank ones, physical or magical. Um, not super interested in that. Would actively attacking increase damage by 5% and lifesteal by 15? This feels a little too low for me, but damage might be better than attack and defense in some situations. Um, but overall, they're pretty good, but you pick what you want. So I put sword on the other one, right? And for this one, I'm going to want wand because I want the attack and defense. It's just generically good on so many things. So I'm going to come here and we are going to do wand, which is actually not wand. It's called staff. But here we go. We're going to send 500 bucks. We're going to roll it. Now, I first your first roll, you should always click use because there's literally no reason not to. But now let's say I get this and I don't like the magic defense. I can engrave again. And I am just re-rolling what I get. So now I got magic defense plus 5%. And I, is that more than 15? That's way better than 15. So I'm going to use it. But let's say I want to do five or six rolls in a row, right? Quit giving me better shit. All right, magic defense plus seven. We're on our way. This is supposed to be an example video, bro. All right, here we go. Magic attack plus 33. I don't want. So you get just re-engrave. Magic attack four. I'm going to just stick with the magic defense for right now. Um, physical defense four. I don't want that. I don't think I'm going to find better than this on a common. So, but I'm just going to do one more. Here we go. All right. Let's say I did. Oh, it's better. Okay. But let's say I did this and I decided I did not want it. I could hit quit and keep my old one. I don't need to take the new one, but in this case, I am going to take the new one. Cause that is actually pretty good. This could be great for, um, this is probably great for, uh, what's his name suppression so that's basically how engraving works right and if we come back to this screen here we're both going to see that this piece of gear gives me eight percent magic attack, 17 attack this gives me 100 hp and because i have both of them equipped i have the resonance where i'm getting 12 percent attack and defense as long as i move a couple tiles on my turn so that is the basic of resonance now this is a good system for a lot of for customizing characters and builds because you get really specific stats you also get really specific effects which is really fun However, like when I, if I want to move this onto someone else, like, I don't know, let's just say this guy, oh, wait, you can't use it. I need a guy that could use swords. Who could use swords? No one could use swords in this game. It's the most rare type in the game. So let's say I want sword on this guy, right? And then it's like, oh, but I, what I really want is sword, sword on this guy. But what I want is this piece of gear on the guy. So now like, I wouldn't recommend re-rolling this to like re-rolling the, the things on this just to get the resonant effect. This is something you're going to want to be thinking about ahead of time. It should try avoid like I want sword sword on this guy because he needs a higher crit chance to actually deal damage to unarmed enemies. And um, this is not as good as for that because critting is more than 12% damage on average. Um, so this is something you're going to want to consider. Let's go and take that off. So let's take a look at some of the stats you can roll, though. This is the low stuff. Let's take a look at my higher power level characters with their better gear, right? So this is 12% physical attack. And this is a bad roll, by the way, because you can get up to three stats. 8% physical attack on here, right? So this is plus 20% physical attack combined with the fact that when he attacks unharmed enemies, he gets increased crit. Um, Guzman here, right? 7% max HP. And then here he's got 8% magic defense and 5% max HP, right? There's a lot of stats. And when he's injured, he increases his damage and decreases damage taken. And when he's dying, he decreases increases damage by 15%. It's an additional so 15% and decreases damage taken by 15%. And 
and his reaction is when he's dying, he takes 50%, he gets 50% additional damage negation on top of like, like, so like you can see these stats really start stacking up. Um, when you find characters with abilities that you really want, I actually think that this goes on her, the denial hammer. I think this is her weapon, right? So yeah, same thing here. There, I just, I like the sword wand combo. So that's kind of my thing, but 7% attack. 44 more physical attack, 6% attack, 7% HP, 5% magic attack. Like some of these rolls are fucking huge. Um, so you're absolutely going to want to be using this ASAP, but don't go overboard because I'm telling you, I ate through a million gold, like fucking that, just re-rolling those gears. Now, in order to get these currencies, you actually are going to want to go into the voyage, the crossing worlds, and it's going to be where you've been going for most of the game already, the radiant forging. It just starts unlocking at level eight eight is where it starts unlocking right you have it you'll you will get a few i think it's guaranteed but you only get a few of them and then when you come up here you're going to get a few of the silver ones and then i think here's where you get the gold ones and then the legendary ones unless we get a lot more money i'm probably going to stick at 55 to just use to re-roll golds because you could re-roll uh what's the ratio here you could re-roll how many golds let's go to our inventory to engrave one piece of gear with legendary is 30,000, and this is 5,000, right? So you could do this, what, literally six times for every one of these. And I think six rolls of these could probably, on average, be better than one roll of this. However, the highs of this are kind of unparalleled. Like, th these are going to be the best. You're more likely to get three attributes, and they're more likely to be the percent bases, and they're more likely to be high. So once you have a lot of money, that's going to be what you want to do. But... Other ways to get that and to basically get everything in the game, right? You come over here to the store. They hide a lot of stuff in the shop, but not in the paid section of the shop. You're going to come down here. You can go into the insignia. You can get the, let's see if I already bought them here. You can get legendary engraving chests here, right? That's pretty good. Is there any other engraving chests in here? Um, Star Glow at epic engraving chest. This one could be really good because, again, this I think these ones are way more bang for your buck. Um, so these are going to be really good here on top of the fact that you're just going to need powder and ore to actually level up weapons anyway. So farming this stuff is all going to be good. Um, as far as reputation goes, you do get more engraving chests in here as well. So if you don't want to run the stages, you should probably be running stages in general because you need to level up weapons. But maybe you're done leveling up your weapons like the your 12 best weapons are all level uh, 60. And so you can come in here and you could spend your stamina somewhere else and you can at least still get some of these on a weekly basis the gear tab actually funnily enough doesn't have any um which is where you think it would be um but i bet you could buy some with actual paid current or this is free currency but um in here as well other things you want to be keeping track of don't do this but on most other things you want to consider start buying this gold you want to consider it because i spent all my gold so i actually came in here looking to buy gold for the first time since i started the game like, I might buy these in six days if I have a lot of currency. I don't know yet because I'm at Tower 10.5. So I might have excess currency to buy this kind of stuff. Because you can't afford to buy out the shop. But gold is something I don't want to be stuck on. And that is something that I'm currently going to be stuck on. So that is basically the rundown of the engraving system. It's incredibly powerful. It's fun. It can be very expensive from a re in-game resource standpoint on your gold. Um, but I mean, I guess we finally have something to spend gold on. I never had any gold problems at all until now. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a huge power spike for you. Once you get this, you are going to be able to easily clear most of the content in the game. I don't think even the weapon trials are going to be a challenge for anybody when they hit level 50. So I am kind of interested to see. I guess tower is going to be the new uh, big thing, right? You might actually be able to fight tower now. You know, you might actually, if you have the right team and the right setup, you might have enough stats to actually beat tower which would be a lot of fun um instead of having to cheese everything every single week but that's all for today guys thank you very much for platypus is per plout a i'll see you on the flip-flops bye platypus on the rise watch the news go